Star Wars Ahsoka Episode 7 was terrible. The Filoni faithful have been supporting this show the entire time. We've completely forgotten how terrible the first three episodes were because there was some lightsaber duels and some Anakin Skywalker nostalgia bait and the new galaxy. Oh wow, Star Wars is a new galaxy now. Filoni is cooking. But episode 7, well, I'm sorry to say, but episode 7 completely failed. It didn't do well with the fans, and I'm going to rip it apart in this review. Hera is on trial. Senator Ziano is getting a lot of development in this show. He is also in Dave Filoni's animated sequel trilogy series, Star Wars Resistance. So, for any of you holding out hope that Disney is coming to their senses and eliminating three bad movies, it's not happening. And if you choose to enjoy this show and support Disney canon going forward, you are a Ray boy. You love Ray, and you want to lick the inside of her ass. Jedi. False Jedi, star maps, star whales, distant galaxies. Honestly, are we to believe any of it? Ziana was sounding really stupid. Even Star Wars sex explained it an issue with it. And I'm like, bro, do you even live in this galaxy? It's absurd, but I think it's representative of how out of touch he is. Talking about Jedi, false Jedi, space whales. Yes, Jedi, you should be aware of them. They might still be around. Have you heard of Luke Skywalker? The false Jedi. Did you see the security recordings of what happened? Morgan Elspeth was broken out of jail by two people with a lightsaber. Everyone died. That's not strange. The space whales. Isn't this common knowledge that these beings exist in Dave Filoni's Star Wars? And the others just continue to let Ziano mansplain. We have another cameo. C-3PO comes in with a message from Leia Organa. Did we see Leia? No! And get used to this, they'll continue to name drop Han, Luke, and Leia in the upcoming shows. Just because it's cheap and shills will eat up nostalgia bait. Speaking of nostalgia bait, Anakin Skywalker returns in a recording. He says exactly what he said in the last Ahsoka trailer. And with that, I highly doubt he will be returning in Episode 8. This was another pointless nostalgia bait scene to tinkle the jinies of the fake fan Disney lovers, and it doesn't seem to be working this time. He was a good master. Oh yeah, he was so great. That's why you left him. You cut him out of your life! They come out of hyperspace into an Imperial minefield. Oh no, it's gonna be hard to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. They get attacked and they get through it. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. The master was General Anakin Skywalker. Yes. So Thrawn didn't know Anakin Skywalker was Ahsoka's master? I was wondering if Filoni did his homework, and he didn't. He knows Anakin. The book Thrawn Alliances details their meeting during the Clone Wars as I've seen some fans saying Thrawn should have known about the connection between Anakin and Ahsoka already, and it's true, Padme does mention Ahsoka's name to Thrawn, but it was one time and in passing, and it was like 20 years ago, give the man a break, he's got a lot going on. Also, this is a pretty damn efficient way to show who Thrawn is and how he operates while also acknowledging his history from the books without overwhelming anyone new to the character. It turns out, in the Disney Thrawn books, Thrawn was made aware that Ahsoka was Anakin's apprentice. I'm not accepting any justifications for it. Surely not any from Star Wars sex explained. Thrawn is supposed to be incredibly smart, and Dave Filoni is trash. We cut back to Ezra and Sabine. She told him about all the events. And for anyone still holding out hope that the savior of Star Wars will eliminate the sequels... The Empire was defeated. Battle of Endor. The Emperor died. That's what people say. Baloney is cooking, and he is setting up Palpatine's return in Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Disgusting! What a fucking bozo! Let's think about this. To Sabine's knowledge, Ahsoka is dead. She died. Does she look like someone who is sad about it? Depressed? 
No, she's happy, in a good mood. She found Ezra. She's got her legs up in the air, ready to get plowed. Then, because of bad writing, she didn't bother to mention anything that happened that led her here. Speaking of Ahsoka, Ahsoka uses the Force to call Sabine, and Sabine is able to hear it because Dave Filoni is cooking. She has a tiny amount of midichlorians, but because she's a strong woman, she has the power of a Jedi. And Dave Filoni is at it again with his plagiarism. In Empire Strikes Back, this was Luke Skywalker and his sister, who is highly force sensitive. They were able to share a connection. Luke was able to share this connection with Vader after this scene. I guess Ahsoka and Sabine are equally qualified to perform this as well. This episode heavily featured ripoffs from Empire Strikes Back. We're going to get pulverized if we stay out here much longer. We're going to get pulverized if we stay out here much longer. Balin and Shin find Ezra and Sabine, and Balin's skull decides to ditch his apprentice. Did Balin even tell her his plan? Why did he drag her out to this galaxy? Why didn't he just leave her behind? He's just going to ditch her now. This goes back to his terrible planning in episodes 1 and 4. What are the chances Thrawn even wants Shin? This isn't a sure thing. Balin is rolling the dice with this. Was this always the plan, or was it an impulse after talking with her in the last episode, in the part where he was very vague about his plan, and he didn't like how she responded to it? I still want to just shake the man and ask him what he wants on Peridia. And he's telling her to kill both of them. He doesn't know the history of Ezra and his lightsaber. As far as he's concerned, he may have it. He may have somehow made a new one. Balin doesn't know anything about this planet. Maybe Ezra is a different kind of weapon. Or he's been practicing his abilities in the Force. Shin, who is becoming the most overrated Star Wars character ever, has a hard time beating Sabine. And she's a fake news Jedi. You add Ezra into the mix, you think she's going to take both of them out? It's not likely. Oh, but she's got some troops with her. Yeah, a bunch of jobbers that Sabine handled easily in the last episode. I'm sure they're going to make a difference. But Balin has no problem sending Shin to her death. And you know, the only thing that makes sense is he wants her to die. That's why he's always sending her to take care of business unassisted by him. This show is incredibly stupid. They chase after Sabine, the crab people are useless, and for some reason they have a hard time catching up to Sabine. And Sabine is just killing them easily. Ahsoka does her best Silver Surfer impression. She surfs right into Balin's skull, and they go at it for a second time. I was yelling at the screen, give him your lightsaber, you stupid fake Jedi bitch. And Sabine did it. At least she tried. But Ezra turned it down, because I guess he's as powerful as Emperor Palpatine now. No, he's Yoda. At least take a blaster. No. The Force is my ally. That's all I need. For my ally is the Force. And the powerful ally it is. Sabine starts shooting at people, just keeping the lightsaber to herself. Oh, dude, The Force is Ezra's ally, but he's also judo chopping, judo tripping, and kicking people. If he's doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, I don't see why he can't just use a weapon. This is life or death. This is no time to show off, and he pays for it later. The choreography in this show has reached an all-time bad. Ahsoka has her back to Balin, and he does nothing with this position. Dave Filoni, who's not even trained in the ways of the Force, would do more with that position. Ezra gets taken out by Shin with Force powers alone, knocks him out a little bit. Ugh, maybe he should have taken the lightsaber instead of messing around. This is the third time Sabine and Shin have engaged in lightsaber combat, and I'm not convinced it's the last time. Ezra saves Sabine from getting sliced and diced, reinforcements come, and Ahsoka saves them all. And Ezra decides, oh, this situation now requires me to use a weapon. Maybe next time, you just take the damn lightsaber. Terrible writing and cooking from Dave Filoni. It's raw. It's fucking raw. Come on, man. It's raw. The guy can't change his underwear the right way. We haven't even served the fucking entree, but need to get food out. 
Thrawn calls off all the troops, he just wants to leave them all in the new galaxy. The same galaxy all the Filoni faithful were praising that is apparently absent of the sequel trilogy and all the failures of Disney Star Wars. What about this new galaxy has been interesting? The whole plot centers around trying to leave this galaxy. Even the crab people seem like they want to leave. So once again, Star Wars fans are getting excited about something. The new galaxy and all the possibilities that are in this galaxy. And it's a disappointment. Ahsoka offers Shin help and she declines. Pretty stupid decision. Balin abandoned her. Thrawn is abandoning her. If she wants to make it off this planet, her best bet is to see what's going on with the other non-canon characters. Star Wars Ahsoka Episode 7 was terrible. It was not received well by the fandom. We can only hope that Episode 8 is incredibly bad. The one thing I'm banking on is Sabine Wren. They showcase the kind of Jedi she'll be. A Jedi-Mando hybrid. But the one thing that's lacking is the Force powers. Now, Sabine has an extremely low midichlorian count and at this time can't use the Force. But that doesn't matter to Dave Filoni at all. These powers have been teased throughout the show and Episode 8 is the time for to pay off. And if it's anything like Rey, the fandom will have a Star Wars meltdown. Make sure to become a knight, subscribe to the channel, join the Knights of Melvin Discord, help plot to take down Disney and all their shills. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural.